Hey guys, today we are going to talk about 10 pre-order prices for Iconic Masters. Now is not the time to go out and pre-order it. The same would go for Ixlon. With the exception of maybe 1 or 2% of the cards, the rest of the entire set will fall upon release. Now, do I like Iconic Masters? Yes, I feel like they put a lot of good valuable cards and it is quite calculated. Remember, a booster pack for this Master Series costs $10. That is two and a half times the MSRP of a regular booster pack. So you're not getting two and a half times as many cards. The question is, are you getting two and a half times the value? So let's take a look at a few cards in the set. At Mythic is Consecrated Sphinx. It's about $21 pre-order. I expect this one to fall a ton. Next is Magus of the Moon. The rare slot is very good, but the pre-order price is going to crumble upon release. I suspect that just like the other Modern Masters, which you can still buy for way under MSRP, and the other Eternal Masters, which is still under MSRP, and even I think Modern Masters 2015 may be under MSRP still with the Karn Liberated. I know that a while ago I was buying it for $220 a box. I opened one on the channel. So Magus of the Moon, pretty good. It's you know Blood Moon 5 to 8. It does die to Shock, Fatal Puss, and all of these, so it's a little bit more easy to get rid of, given the fact that Creature Removal is more common than Enchantment Removal. But nonetheless, a card that wanted to see a reprint and should go down to below 10. Mana Drain, that's the big one. Uh, Mana Drain, I don't feel like will be over 100. It is going to drop. So the value of this set is different from, let's say, Modern Masters 2017, where you have the, your Lily, you have your Snap, and then you have the five fetch lands. The value of this set is spread more evenly. And a lot of the cards are modern staples. Mana Drain is interesting because people may buy this product for the cards that they can play modern, and they might just end up with a Mana Drain or a few, which they can trade into some good stuff. So Mana Drain, definitely a great card in ED8s. I'm glad to see it reprinted. However, it's not the chase cards that you would normally have, uh, which would be Tamagoy, Lily. There's not that many chase mythics. Uh, and that's quite interesting when you look at Modern Masters 2017, where it's had a bunch of them. The card I'm most excited for is Horizon Canopy. I truly believe no lands, including dual lands, or including reserve list dual lands, which is the same thing as dual lands, should be over $20. Uh, lands are the basis of basic magic. I mean, they're just, you need them. Now, back in the day, it was not clear that lands would be, you know, the dual lands would be $500 a piece, underground sea would be $500 a piece, because I assumed that the creatures would get less powerful and the lands would always remain the same. Like the underground sea would always be underground sea. Maybe you had a, you would have better lands as the game went on. I could not have imagined that the bottleneck is the land, right? The bottleneck for Legacy is the 10 dual lands, for the most part. Now, there are, is an argument that there are other bottlenecks available, but without the basic lands, <laughs> without the lands that you need to play the game, kind of hard. Ancestral Vision, uh, this one, I do have, mm, I would say, more than a playset of this one, so it kind of hurts to see this one hit. Uh, but the artwork is very beautiful. I like it. And sometimes if you have a large magic collection, you're going to get hit. Like there's no way that you survived an entire set of reprints completely unfazed, right? Now, a lot of you are going to say, hmm, whatever is not reprinted will go up in price. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be true because there's a lot of... So you dodge this reprint. Let's say, let's take Rashawn Port. You dodge the reprint Iconic Masters. 25th anniversary is knocking right on the door, right? It's, how can I say it? 
you dodge dodging a reprint does not actually give you much time to dodge the next reprint. Uh, Grove of the Burn Willows. I remember this card was so expensive one time. It was being played in all the Tron decks. It was so good. And when Tron was a tier, I, I wouldn't call it tier two right now. I call it like tier two point five. But when Tron was one of the better decks, tier one, this was incredibly expensive. Beautiful card. Very glad that we're getting a reprint at a rare. So that's good. That's definitely a plus in my book that they did not upgrade it to a mythic. The other crazy part about having so many on, on master sets, Eternal, Iconic, 25th, all of these things is... I don't know. Besides, okay, let's put aside the value of a collection. So let's not talk about the value of collection for this particular point. Asking the player base to pay $10 a pack to get cards they really want is very taxing. I think the players don't have any more money. I know I, I have money to buy stuff I want, but I don't have money to continue to buy. I can't buy this, then wait for 25th anniversary, buy Ixlan, and then buy Unstable. And buy Commander. Like, I'd already bought Commander, so that's already done. I can't go into Ixlan, so you have to sacrifice, right? I don't know how many people have the money to go Ixlan, Unstable, and then into Iconic Masters, and then 25th Anniversary Masters coming up, which might be even better, right? So like if these two things are so close together, then the question is, which one are you gonna to choose to buy? So you, you have to make a decision, like you have to budget. Like budgeting has become super important right now in MTG Finance, and it's not even like, it's not like spending money unwisely. These cards will have value, like, Thought sees with this artwork. Yeah, it's going to be valuable. It's a beautiful card. I'm glad they chose this artwork. But, you know, Horizon, Horizon Canopy, that's a card I really need. I just needed that card for so long, but I couldn't say, oh, I'm going to pay $100 for this card and pay $400 for playset. So I'm so glad it's reprinted as a rare. So it should tank. So my question would be, how is anyone affording this stuff? Like, how can you afford all this stuff? In the unstable, the lands look good, and there's kind of a guarantee of a land a pack, I assume. Therefore, there's no variance, and it's just kind of fun to do with friends. And that's why, you know, I like it, because the there's no randomness. You just buy your booster box, and you grab 36 of those lands. Hopefully, some of them would be foil, and that's it. The randomness is how many foil land you get a booster box, right? That's it. There's no other real value in the, I mean, initially yes eventually some of the foils will go up a ton in price but initially there's not that much value i think they did a good job they did a fantastic job in the set i just kind of wish that they gave magic players and me uh you know a little break from buying and buying and buying i just feel like it's buy this buy that buy this buy this buy this buy this buy this and it's too much uh it's too much because i want to buy all this stuff it's like Fire Emblem. You guys know I like Fire Emblem. And sometimes they come out with a banner, like a summer banner, which like with bikinis and stuff. And it's like, hmm, I'm really interested in this. Let me buy some orbs. And they come out with even better banners. Like uh, choose, if you don't play Fire Emblem, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But assume they come out with an even better banner and with actual useful units that you always really wanted, but you couldn't afford. And you're like, oh, cool, discount units. And then they come up with Choose Your Legends banner, which is like all your favorite characters in different costumes. And you're like, oh, oh man, I need to spend there. That's exactly what I feel like is happening with Magic the Gathering. And for a gacha game, which is Fire Emblem, this is acceptable because it's just the way it is. I've played so many mobile games where you just have to keep buying stuff. Like, oh, cool, I want this unit. No, I want this one. Oh, no, no, look at this one that I've just kind of uh, accepted it, but Magic has never been that way for me. I've always been able to keep up and buy whatever I wanted to and still have money left over. It, it kind of hurts my PayPal is suspended for a little bit of time, but when it's unsuspended, I should be able to go on a buying spree, which will be fun. Um, I did have, it turns out that I have extra money that I need to spend on hobbies. 
really weird. I'm not going to go into details about it, but my I set aside a amount of money that I spend on hobbies, and I haven't traveled very much uh, recently. Now there is a wedding in Louisiana I really want to go to without drain some of my some of that money, but I haven't I haven't traveled, and if you don't travel. That saves a ton of money, and I haven't gone to any GPs. So GP Houston is in January, I feel like, but the last one was like two and a half years ago, maybe more. I don't know. I, I go to every GP in Houston because I live in Houston, right? And it's just like the George R. Brown Center, which is like where all the conventions are. Anyway, anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.